Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and we're going to be super original today and talk about something that no one else in the world is talking about, and that is the lockdown. <laughs> A lockdown where the ice cream man is still very prominent around here for some bizarre reason. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I know, talking about the lockdown is never fun. It is not something that I particularly really wanted to talk about, but I don't know, I was just having a really down day. And I woke up this morning just feeling really sad about life, I guess, and what things are turning out to be, and I just kind of wanted to get some stuff off my chest because, I don't know, this isn't going to be a rant and this isn't going to be a sob story, I've just, I don't know, I've been doing a lot of thinking and I've learned some stuff about myself during lockdown that I never expected, because that's the thing, I'm filming this on the, I think it shows how super organised I am at the moment, as of filming this today it is the 15th of May, which is Friday. I upload on Saturday, so I'm um, filming this today to upload tomorrow, and then Sunday it is my birthday. I am turning 27. I am turning 27, and by that point you'd think, oh well, you know, you're nearly in your 30s. Nearly in your freaking 30s. You should have a lot of your life, you know, sorted by now. You should know exactly who you are, you should know how your mind processes things, you should have a pretty good idea of self by that point. But that's a lie. <laughs> pretty much everyone I've spoken to, like, who is older than me, is, like, who's just, you know, around the same age, a little bit younger, everyone, no matter what the age, is still trying to figure themselves out. No one is 100% sure of who they are, because life is constantly changing, therefore your mindset is constantly changing, the human race is designed to be adaptable, so it's like near impossible to say for sure who you are, because next year you could be a very different person. Going on a tangent once again, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I, I was doing a lot of thinking, and I've learned a lot about myself, and I don't know, I just kind of wanted to share some thoughts, just have a bit of a a vlog rant. This isn't going to be a this is my routine during lockdown because for those of you who've seen my Camp NaNoWriMo vlogs you know my routine at this point. I have tried to change it because something that I've learned about myself, which is big number one, is that I am nowhere near as organised as I originally liked to think I was. So when we were first having rumours of oh yeah we're going into lockdown, you know, maybe next week, maybe next month, who knows, I was kind of excited not because of why we were going into lockdown, because it is a horrible, horrible thing, and so many people are losing their lives and being affected, and good god, the sooner that this pandemic is over with, the better. But no, I was excited as in I was going to have free time, right, just in time for Camp NaNoWriMo, so I could do so much writing. When I first started like, hearing rumours, I was like, okay, on a global scale this sucks, however, I could try and look at the positives here. I could look at it and say, well, okay, during the lockdown I'm gonna get the first branded book completely edited, all proofread and everything like that, and have it ready for publishing. I'm gonna write the entirety, the entire, the entire, the entirety, the entirety of the second, <laughs> the entirety of the second book. So hopefully get that to a point of nearly being published as well. I'd start the sequel series. I would get the house completely sorted, I would just, you know, have things on track. <laughs> but I don't. I apparently need a routine much more than I originally thought I did. And that just goes to show, because when we were doing uh, the big NaNoWriMo in November, I was working two jobs. I had people coming over once a week for D&D nights, I had family to visit, I had other things to keep on track of, like my like the videos and my and my blog and all the rest of it, so it was all systems go, and yet I still managed to write over 73,000 words, which is bloody amazing if I do say so myself. But here, even though I have like the one full-time job, I'm not in that full-time job because of lockdown, and 
I ended up doing 49,000, which is still pretty damn good, but when you look at the two, the two different situations, I should have written like maybe twice as much, but I didn't. And that is because I need a routine. I was fully aware before that I had all of these things going on, so when I did sit down to write, I was more focused and able to put more into it. Whereas here, if I didn't do writing one day, then it doesn't really matter because, you know, it's not like I've got work to worry about the next day and I haven't got a schedule to keep so I can do things at my own pace. And apparently doing things at my own pace is just setting myself up for disaster because I can only do things when I have pressure on myself. Because I have so much anxiety, I was just always under the impression that working under pressure didn't work well for me because anxiety. However, looking at it now, I've learnt that I do work better under pressure because I'm setting a bar for myself. By telling you guys something, or telling one of my friends or Tom, hey, this is a thing I want to do and I want to do it by this day, then it's setting a standard that I then get more anxious about if I don't meet it. I, I'm really missing routine, which is weird because I was not enjoying my new job as much as I thought I was going to, and that's not the job itself. I I love the job. I mean, looking after the kids, working in a nursery, the, oh, the kids are just so cute, and the job itself is so fun, and I'm not being funny, but I'm, I'm gonna share some stories at some point, like do a story time of working in a kids club and working in a nursery, but obviously, you know, change the names to keep the kids safe and all that jazz. But I don't know, there's just something so heartwarming when you're just playing with a kid and you're just, you know, just playing with toy cars, for example, and you're just like, you know, going a little bit overboard because they're younger, like, oh, this is the red car, shall we play with the red car? And then they just look at you, and even though they haven't really got much of a vocabulary yet, apart from mum and dad and stuff like that, they just look at you like, then go, red car, and you're like, I taught them something! <laughs> but no, what was hitting me with the job was I started, I loved it, the people were great, I was in this location, I was fine. And then they say, oh, by the way, someone in a different location is going on maternity leave, so you need to go there for a few months. I hope you're okay with that. And I was not okay with that, but, you know, new job, trying to make first impressions, so obviously I bit my tongue. It's like, yes, I'm totally okay with that. And then I go there, and my new boss is someone who used to give me hell in school, and the person that I'm covering for maternity leave also gave me hell in school. And that just knocked me right back down and made me think, I don't like this job, I don't want to be here anymore, this was a mistake, I should have stayed with the previous two jobs, even though the one shop job I had has been made redundant because that shop has closed down now. Oh my god. And it was just such a massive emotional and mental setback. And this girl, this girl, something else that I've learned about myself in lockdown, I hate this fringe. I hate that I had it cut in in the first place. So much regret and I can't even blame quarantine hair because I did this before the quarantine even started. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, back on track. So yeah, I was under the impression that I just really didn't like my job anymore because of these people, but now I've had time away and I've had time to think. And I realised that I do still love this job so much. I still love the kids, I still love the activities we do, I still love the atmosphere of being in a nursery where you're just seeing these little sponge minds grow and they're just so cute. It's just the people. It's just the, that one person, because obviously the one's on maternity leave now, so it's just that one person. And I'm not going to be there forever. September, I think they said, I'm going back to the other location, I'm going back to my people. It's okay. It is okay. And I've kind of become accepting about that. Not everything in lockdown has to be negative. I mean, there are negative points. Like, I'm an introvert by nature, so it's not like I'm sitting here going, oh my god, I can't go to the bar anymore or anything like that. I, you know, I'm, I'm way past the bar scene at this point. I did my bar thing in uni, burnt out with it not too fussed about going back, but just little things like if I'm, write, I'm writing in the house constantly, I'm in the house constantly. I miss just going to the coffee shop. I miss just that, I miss the change 
in atmosphere. I miss the change of scenery and even just at the moment, I miss just talking to people, like going outside and you see a neighbour but you have to like shout at them across the street. It's not the same and I miss my friends so much. Like once a week they come over to our house for a D&D &D session and you know, I you know, the, the night before I'd like do a bunch of baking, like I'd make vegan cookies for him because a few of them are vegan and vegetarian, so I'd make vegan cookies for him, and I'd make like vegan flapjacks or just you know other like little baking goods, and maybe one of them will come early so they can have some of like our dinner as well, and then everyone joins in, and it's just so much fun, and you can have a laugh, and it's just you you play off each other amazingly, and even though we still do it online with our headsets, and sometimes we'll have. Um, their cameras up to see their faces, but it's just not the same. <laughs> it's not the same, and even like my family, I, again, when the lockdown started, I thought, okay, well obviously I'm going to miss my family, but I don't really see them that often. I mean, still, I say that, it was still like once a week, but, you know, like my dad's side, I only see him like once every two weeks or something like that because he lives further away and we, we all work now. My mum, I'd see her on the weekends. When, when I was working in the kids club, it was her kids club, so I was seeing her all the time in work then. Obviously changing jobs, so I saw each other less. So I thought, okay, we're still seeing each other once a week, so it won't be too bad. My granddad, even before, well, since I moved out, he starts calling me at five o'clock every day for us to have a little daily chat. And that was like, when I moved out, that was when I moved out in the East. That's not just a lockdown thing. And I thought, It'll be okay, but it's not. I miss my mum so much. I am more of a mum's girl than I ever thought I was. <laughs> I miss her so much. I miss my dad. I miss my stepmom. I miss my sisters, my my aunts, my cousins, my granddad. I I miss them all so much. I really, really do. And. Tom's been great. Tom has been great. I mean, I miss his family as well. His family are amazing. Tom's been great. He's really kept my spirits up. We've gotten closer, I feel like, and it's so weird to think that this time last year we'd only been married a month and now we're married a year and it's it's crazy. <laughs> um, but I miss people. I, I'm still a big introvert. That has not changed. However, I do realise that I miss people and interactions far more than I ever thought I would, which makes me feel lucky when it comes to YouTube videos and, you know, just some type of contact. And even like last week when we had VE Day down here and we had like a little street party, which ended up just being a few neighbours sitting on their doorsteps, waving at each other and, you know, yelling across the street, oh, so how are you getting on? Oh, not too bad. Go back to work yet? Nah, working from home. And that was pretty much it, but that's all you needed. It was such a pick-me-up. <laughs> uh, I don't know when I'm going back to work. There's so many rumours going around that we're going to be trying to open schools and childcare, things like that, by the 1st of June. I am extremely sceptical whether that's actually going to be a thing or not, and I, I don't see us going back until after the summer holidays, to be honest. So this turned into a bit of a thing, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, uh, 1st of June, I'm, I'm treating that as like a, a marker. Is as we've learned, I work better under pressure apparently, so I'm putting it out there now. By the 1st of June, I will have all of the first branded book completely edited. Maybe not to a point of being published, because it's just my version of editing that's going forward, but that is what I'm doing. I'm going to have this thing completely edited by the 1st of June, so then I can send it off to people and we can see where it goes from there. I'm not going to kid myself and say that I'm also going to have the second branded book completely written as a first draft, because I'm not completely insane yet. <laughs> but yeah, I'm focusing on the editing for now, just because that is what is draining me the most, and we will go from there. That is my major goal at the end of the day, is to have that done, because I'm not as organised as I thought I was. I need structure, I need routine and I need some kind of pressure on myself, otherwise things just don't get done. 
I've started writing to-do lists again for day-to-day -day things, which has really helped. I have started writing in my diary a bit more as well, just to get things out there and yeah. <laughs> I am really sorry that this video ended up being so weird and so unfocused. I did not have a plan going into this video, I just wanted to talk and rant and just get some stuff off my chest and I do feel like it's helped. But one major thing that I've learned about all of this is that it is 100% completely okay to not be okay. I have had that drummed into my head from the start. It is okay not to be okay. And it is still something that I am struggling with, but I'm getting there. It is okay to want to cry every now and again. It is okay to feel like you just don't want to get out of bed. It is okay to feel like you haven't done enough. But at the end of the day, we're all in this together. We're all doing something and we're all trying. We all know that things need to get done and we all know that eventually things will get back to normal and we all know that we are trying our best in some right. <laughs> it's okay to not be okay because it will be okay at some point further down the line. <sighs> Again, I'm sorry that this video ended up being so weird. Um, after lockdown, I think I'm gonna have a lot more of my priorities in order. I have a feeling that this is gonna change me for the better. And <sighs> I'm kind of okay in looking forward to that. I don't know, this ended on a bit of a weird note and I don't really know how to end this video now, so I will just end it. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing okay. Let me know how you're doing in the comments below. I really want to know. If you just want someone to talk to, send me a message, leave a comment. If you just want to rant, go ahead, you know, people will listen. If you, Even if you don't want people to listen, just getting it out there will help. And just try something new, anything. Try my crappy donuts if you want to. God knows they ended up being awful. I was trying to kid myself so much in that video. They still tasted good and I liked them, but we can all admit that was a failure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, ending the video. This was a rant. This was weird. And I'm sorry, but I'm also not sorry. Because I'm okay with not being okay right now. I have my goals. I have some kind of a plan in order. And I'm just going to run with it. And I hope you guys are doing the same and I hope you're doing well, I hope you're staying safe and I hope you are just owning whatever it is you do, I hope you're owning it. <laughs> I will see you in the next video, goodbye my scribblers. <laughs>